Shiva is always waiting at the Mahasma Shine. He's made that his abode because he's waiting. And every time somebody dies, he dances in celebration. The death itself in this culture particularly always been portrayed as a grand event. Sadhguru, why is death always portrayed as dark, sinister? Why is there heaviness? Why is so much fear attached to it? If you look at mostly the civilizations, ancient civilizations, all have some sort of heaviness and even the, even the, the symbols, if you see Yamaraj as a symbol, if you see, or you see the, the Grim Reaper, you, you see, there is some heaviness and darkness and certain kind of imagery which comes with death. Why is it so Sadhguru? If we look at how we have perceived and portrayed death in this part of the world, you will see that death is not seen as sinister. But the dark patch of the death is for the living, that there is a loss. Loss is always a dark thing, whether it's small things or big things. People break down when they lose something that's precious to them. It could be things, it could be people, it could be many things, you know. So, the darkness is only concerned with the living about the death, but the death itself in this culture particularly, always been portrayed as a grand event. It's only now that Indians are imitating the West and walking with faces held down. Otherwise, even today it is there. When people die, we wear white clothes, not dark clothes. There is a certain science behind that, I'll look at that later. Above all, there are wonderful stories. The legend goes like this, Shiva is always waiting at the Mahasmashan. He's made that his abode because he's waiting. And every time somebody dies, he dances in celebration. What kind of a pervert can he be? <laughs> that somebody dear to me is dead and he will dance and celebrate. Let's look at the fundamental aspect of what life is because they're not two different things. What we call as life right now in the experience of most human beings is just the body that they have accumulated and a certain amount of thought and emotion that they have accumulated around themselves. It's very clear to any human being who pays a little attention to the nature of his life, that he can clearly see that body is an accumulation, the psychological structure is also an accumulation. Now, beyond these things, there is life. So what you call as life is, when you were children, I'm sure uh, you definitely did blow some soap bubbles. When you blew a soap bubble, the bubble was real. But what was inside the bubble is just the atmosphere all over. When the bubble burst, burst, one drop of the soap water fell on the floor, rest of the… the whole content of the bubble, where it went, you can never see because it's just… never was because it's just a part of everything. This is the nature of life. The whole cosmos, is a living mass of life. You built a bubble, when the bubble burst, and th for those, if somebody has a perspective of the other aspect or the other side, let's… let's look at life and death like this. You're in this side of the wall, somebody else is on the other side of the wall. 
When the bubble burst and this air which was… or this life which was trapped in this bubble became released, and what's happening on the other side is way bigger than what can happen within the trap of physicality. So he's laughing, singing and dancing because one life got released